Good morning. Let's code a Bollinger Band strategy from scratch. But before we get started, let's get some coffee. Here we go. A little bit of almond milk in there. That's good. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started. So I use NinjaTrader to run my automated trading systems and to build them. It's the platform I recommend and it speeds up the process of building automated strategies. So we're gonna load that up. Give it some time to load because I have a lot of strategies running. Okay, so now I'm going to generate the source code file by going to new at the top left, Ninja Script Editor. I am then going to right click on my strategies folder and hit new strategy. And I'm gonna call this strategy Bollinger Band Counter Trend. Hit next once and then generate. So before we start coding, let's start talking about the idea of the strategy. So Bollinger Band is a price action indicator. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna pull up the NQ futures chart. Then I'm gonna add the indicator I'm gonna go down to B Bollinger Band. Use the default settings. So the Bollinger Band is essentially three moving averages: upper, middle, and lower band. All right. So we can choose to trade this two ways: either a trend-following system, where if it breaks a band, we continue trading, or a counter-trend system, where if it bounces off a band like here, we go the opposite direction. So I think we're gonna do that. Because I've always wanted to do that. All right, so let's go back to the editor. We have our NinjaTrader source code so far generated, uh, sort of like a template, but now we actually have to add logic. As you see, there's no logic here in the on-bar update. So first off, we're gonna need a Bollinger Band indicator variable. So I'm gonna write private Bollinger Band DB. Oh, I think Bollinger Band is just the word Bollinger. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we're gonna instantiate the Bollinger band in the state data loaded. Now the two stands for the number of deviations and the 14 stands for the period. We are going to keep those static for now. So I'm gonna instantiate the Bollinger Band variable and then add it as a chart indicator. So it draws on the chart. Okay, so let's start coding our logic. So first off, as a good practice, you want to wait for enough data to be loaded to start trading. So to do that, I'm gonna write if current bar is less than 20 return, which forces 20 bars to load prior before we start trading. And this is all in our on bar update function, which gets called every bar close. All right, now for our entries. So once again, we want to do a counter trend strategy. 
So if we cross above, well, let's use the high. If the high crosses above BB dot upper. We're going to enter a short trade and vice versa. If the low crosses below the Bollinger band lower, we are going to enter long. Now we want to add some risk management. We're going to add a profit target and stop loss. I'm going to grab that from one of my existing strategies just to save time here. Uh, let's see. Go. So I'm just going to copy that code. Paste it under on bar update. So this gives us a profit target and a stop loss. However, those are just variables. We actually have to activate those. So I'm going to copy code from another strategy. We need these two lines here. And that goes in our configure state. So now we call the set profit target function using ticks as our profit target variable. We also call set stop loss with ticks using our stop loss variable. And then we set those variables at the bottom of the code, usually after the onbar update. It's also a very good practice to default them. So defeat the profit target to 20 ticks and the stop loss to 10 ticks. But we are going to optimize them and, and test different values, not just those values. OK. So now I think we have everything we need to start backtesting. To backtest an Ninja Trader, you go to new at the top left. Go to strategy analyzer. Mine takes a while to load because I have a lot of back tests that I've done in the past and Ninja Trader saves your back tests. So um, by saving it, it has to also load them every time. All right. Now our strategy is called Bollinger Band CT, which is right here. And we're just going to do a technical test. So I'm going to select S&P 500 futures, include my commissions and slippage. I just want to make sure that the actual entries are working correctly. I'm not, I don't care about the net profit. Okay, so it's buying on the low Bollinger Band and shorting on the top when the high is crossing above. All right, so let's talk about the logic here. It's shorted here because the last bar crossed above the high. And it went long here. Or, yeah, it went long here because the low crossed below the lower band.
So the entries look good. Let's see if it's hitting profit target or not. So we have a 20 tick profit target, which would be five points on S&P. So a quick check to see if the targets are working. If you go to the trades tab at, on, on the display dropdown, and you sort by exit name, Yep, we can see the stop loss is working. That's 10 ticks. And then do we see any profit targets? Yeah, we see a couple. Okay, good. All right, now with that in mind, it's time to actually test different values and see if we can find any good strategies. Obviously, this is not a good strategy, but that's okay. We're going to find some good ones. So what I like to do is I like to use one year in sample and another year out of sample. So let's do 2022 as our in sample. So what that means is that 2022 is going to be our testing year. And 2023 is going to be our out of sample testing year once we found the values. So start date, January 1st, 2022. End date, December 31st, 2022. I'm going to change the back test type to optimization. And this allows us to test different values. So sorry, I keep going to half screen. My uh, monitor is really big and my eyesight is going. So I actually use half the screen because I can see better, but I do need some glasses. So profit target, um, our minimum value is probably gonna be 20 ticks. That's, that's pretty low. So let's do 20 to 200, increment by 20. Same thing for the stop loss. We're gonna try all future symbols. So I'm under instrument, I went under the futures and select all. Okay. For the trading hours, let's do the US equities RTH session, which is from 9.30 to 4 p.m. Eastern, the essentially the normal stock market hour session or cash session. And then let's try some different uh, bar sizes. I don't want to just do one minute. So I'm going to select optimize data series. And now we can try a bunch of different minutes. Let's try one minute, probably too often. So let's try a minimum of five minute. Let's go up to uh, 50 minute increment by five. probably going to be a little bit too much. Let's hit run, see how long it's going to take. So it's trying 14,000 different iterations. If it's less than a minute. Yeah, okay. So we'll let this run. I'll speed it up and then um, we'll go over the results. All right, so the optimization finished and it's showing us uh, all the profitable strategies per instrument. So I'm going to sort by the performance column from top to bottom. And now we're going to test all these strategies. So the best NQ strategy had a profit factor of 1.75, making 9,506 over that year with a max drawdown of 1241. Obviously, the equity curve is going to look amazing because this is in sample optimized. But now I actually want to test this out of sample with new data because if I want to trade this strategy live, I want to make sure that it can handle new data. So I'm going to right click this strategy and then select open in strategy analyzer tab. It's kind of duplicates it to a new tab in IndiaTrader. And then the end date here, I'm going to change to 2023. I'm looking for it to make more money. So I'm going to hit run. Oh, 
Okay, so it's it's made an additional about two thousand, maybe a little less than two thousand dollars since that strategy run. It's not too bad. But you see that giving it new data, this strategy actually did better, right? So from basically January 1st, 2023 to the end of 2023, it's made more money. If I go to the yearly net profit, all right, so it made an additional 1944 in 2023. Not, not as good as 2022, uh, which is okay, uh, but it still made money. So that's a great sign. Um, I do want to test more strategies. I don't want to just select the first one. Um, ideally, I want to select the best one. So for the purpose of this video, I'll go through um, more strategies and just fast forward through it. So I ended up finding two profitable strategies, um, not that many uh, with the out of sample testing. And they're actually both profitable strategies were the Russell 2000 futures. Uh, so we found one on a 50 minute, am I blind? Yeah, 50 minute with a 200 tick profit target and 60 tick stop loss. And then we found another on a 45 minute with also the, the same profit target and stop loss. So. They're probably both very correlated. Um, of the two, I'd probably pick the one with the higher return to drawdown. So return to drawdown is your net profit divided by your max drawdown. So the first one had 11,000 net profit divided by 6,000. That's about what, 1.9, 1 1.8. 1 uh, the second one had a $19,000 uh, net profit and a 5,000 max drawdown. So uh, basically 3.8, 3.9. So I'd pick this strategy as the strategy to start you know trading in a demo or sim account now there's a, a couple more steps after this uh, which i teach about in the links below but there's our strategy from scratch uh, that we built um, yeah from scratch using a bollinger band idea let me know if you found value in this video and let me know in the comments below the next video we'll build a, a strategy from scratch using stratch uh, which is a software that speeds up the process significantly and you'll see that in the next video it is good to know how to build strategies from scratch and test ideas. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is very inefficient. And I'll show you why in the next video. So anyways, hope you found value. Have a good week, guys. Bye-bye.